everyone, welcome to AVG Studio. It is a great day today and we hope that every one of you out there are feeling excited. This episode is brought to you by Pet Worldwide Asia. Now let me introduce myself. My name is Ardi and I will be your host for today. Our key person, workplace doctor, president and chief consultant of Pep Worldwide Asia, Angeline Vito, and our VIP speaker, Vivian Lowe, will be speaking with us today. For some of you who don't know who Angeline is, she has over 30 years of experience across international markets and diverse cultures, helping multinational organizations, Fortune 500 companies and their employees to peak everyone's performances. She's also written four books, co-authored by Stephen Covey, Jack Canfield and Dr. Dennis Whitley. So if you're curious, do check that out. She has also managed collaborations with MNCs involving many industries. Industries like healthcare, shipping and transportation, technology industries, logistics, you name it, I think she did it all. As for our VIP speaker, Master Vivian Lowe, she has been coaching students from international and local schools, training them for both local and world championships. In 2004, she participated in a first veteran world championship held at Genting Highlands, Malaysia, won three gold medals and the overall champion trophy. To this day, she continues to attend seminars to gain skills and exposure. Since 1974, she has obtained many black belt downs and recently obtained her seven Dan black belt. With her resilience, confidence and discipline, she has been an inspiring individual to many. Now, without further ado, let's invite Angeline and Vivian up on stage. Hello. Hello. Hi, Adi. How are you? So, so Hi, lovely. Thank you. you. Yeah, Great very good. You. I haven't seen you for a long time. Very too long, too long. You know, this is keeping us apart from each other for too long. I can't wait to be there, you know, having dinner with you as well. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. But you are looking as good as ever. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Adi, thank you for having us here today and hosting the session as well. No problem. Now, before we start, I have a genuine question to ask the both of you. How did the both of you meet? Yeah, I think our guest should be answering this question. Vivian. Okay, we used to be colleagues. You know, I work in Malaysia, she works in Singapore, British Airways, where else? And uh, after she left British Airways, we still keep in touch and we also bump into each other. You know, even that London immigration, we bump into each other. Oh. Oh, we just can't get rid of each other, yeah. right? I mean, exactly. <laughs> we were yeah. in London. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Queuing out at the immigration. Ah, you're here. Ah, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. in Singapore, yeah. you know, we meet her. When she comes to Kuala Lumpur for all her seminars and things like that, we also, you know, she, she being a very busy woman, but she still find time to meet up with me. And I really appreciate that, Angeline. Thank you so much. Well, I think, you know, good friends, we must always keep them close to us, right? So that's actually very important. The distance is not important, but I think what's really important is that constant communication and staying in touch. So we've we've known each other for, I think, easily more than 30 years, would that be? Would it be yes. correct? Should be. <laughs> well, we we <laughs> yes, older than you for sure, Adi, definitely older yeah. than you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So well, we have consolidated you. questions yes. for the both of you to answer. And before we get on to it, I would like to prompt the audiences. If they have any questions, you can actually comment down below in the comment section and we will answer them for you. All right, so let's sure. get on to it. So I believe the first question we have is what inspired you to take on Taekwondo? Vivian? Well, when I, when I was young, when I started Taekwondo, I mean, I just joined, you know, in my school days, I just joined, you know, as one of the curriculum uh, uh, item, and I didn't take it so seriously. You know, as I go older and I started working, 
then I realized I needed something, you know, I need to keep myself fit. And most important, I think I need to protect myself. I think self-defense, you know, I think should be good for me. So I decided to, you know, train, take it seriously and started back training. As I progress, I find that there's lots and lots to learn in Taekwondo. Not only, you know, you know, learn how to kick and punch. There are so many other things that, you know, Taekwondo can offer. So I feel, you know, in actual fact, Taekwondo, the art, the martial art, inspire me to train on. It's so nice today, you know, that we even have our friends. Hi, Hock Eng, you know, and it is signed in our good friends here. Hock Eng is there. Nanthini is there as well. <laughs> so lovely to have you. Thank you so much for supporting our show today. And Judy, thank you for being here as well. Thank so you. lovely to have all our friends here. Fantastic. So I think, you know, even for myself, I mean, I've actually, a lot of people don't really know this, huh? but I've actually learned Taekwondo when I was a kid as well. <laughs> okay. Wow. Of course. Well, I'm not a master like, you know, like Vivian. I stopped at Green Belt. <laughs> okay. At Green well, it's Belt. not too late to continue. <laughs> I know. I still remember all my punches, actually, I think. Oh, I just... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I think it was really fun. You know, I can remember those days because I grew up in the family. My dad was a Taekwondo Black Belt. And mm. so was my sister as well. In fact, both wow. my... My dad and my sister, they also take on to Black Belt. Uh, and then, you know, I learned, I started learning the same pace as my sister, but she just overtook me when it comes to Taekwondo. She was really very, very good at it. I stopped because I didn't like the sparring. I'm like, ah, you know, don't hit me. <laughs> I think that for all ladies, usually they try to hide away from sparring because they're so worried the face get hit, you know? <laughs> Yeah, swallowed eye. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. Personally, for me, it gets quite scary because once I had to do an opening for it's not Taekwondo, but it's Muay Thai, and from then on, I realized that I cannot watch this kind of stuff live <laughs> because when they spar, then he fell down and then he didn't get up. That I'm like cold. I'm like shivering. Like, is he okay? <laughs> yeah. From then on, so hopefully today. Today, today we're going to get some inspiration from Vivian as well. You know, maybe I'm going to start picking it up again. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so on to the next question, we have, what would be the motivation for sending kids to join Taekwondo classes? Is it to avoid being bullied or is it to build self-esteem, respect for others and discipline? Mm, what do you good. think? Well, I think the answer to this is yes. I mean, all those taekwondo will you know guide you you know instill in you self confidence most important when a kid join in you know sometimes as a parent you won't see your child's talent but when put into a taekwondo class you can see you know the talent comes out you know so they give them confidence you know and they also learn how to respect because most important they must respect the instructor first and then any seniors they have to respect the senior as well so all this respect discipline you know because you have to in class you have to follow what the instructor say you know all this discipline play a very important role in, in for the child so i would say all these motivation are definitely good for the kid you know and they they have the confidence when they're being bullied it's not that we encourage them to fight but at least when they are challenged with when they are bullied, they know how to defend themselves, you know. Yeah, I think it's actually very important these days, you know, to teach the children, not just in terms of it as a martial art or a sports, mm -hmm. but really the values behind it. I think, you know, like what you mentioned, the values of respect, the values of self-control, I think that's very critical. Uh, it's a time when you feel like punching someone, that how do you really hold it back? Yeah. I think that's actually more valuable than that punch by itself, right? It's how do you really okay. hold it back and how do you maintain that calmness? Uh, those yeah. are very important values. I, I mean, between you and I, we know that, you know, when we were working in the airline days, there were many, yeah. many difficult passengers. We say, ah, I just feel like punching yeah. this kind of like hang on <laughs> yeah. yeah we have to hold on exactly yeah it's true well speaking of the teachings what are the teachings and values of taekwondo mm. well you see taekwondo is not just kicking and punching there are lots to learn i mean 
in Taekwondo, we have the five tenets, which I think are very good value for one to follow and apply. You know, courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, you know, indomitable spirit. All these are very key values that, you know, as a person trained in Taekwondo, very mm. important. And we even have student oath, you know, to make sure that before you even learn Taekwondo, you must know all this. You must observe the tenets of Taekwondo. You must respect your senior as well as the instructor. So respect must be there. And most important, you, you know Taekwondo is not to fight people. You must not misuse Taekwondo. When you are challenged, yes, you protect yourself, you defend yourself, you know. And you must always be a champion of freedom and justice. You want to build a more peaceful world, not simply use Taekwondo to hit people. You know? These are very, very good values and tools that I use to apply to my personal life as well as in the working life as well. I think all these are we be guided by all this, you know, you empower you to, you know, do well in life, I would say. Well, we actually have a question coming in from Tan Ho Eng. And he asked, mm. Master Vivian, don't yeah. you get injured in your learning? I remember the sparring session, kicking and punching, feeling like being abused by senior level student. Well, <laughs> if I say no, then I'm lying, right? In martial art, you have to you know, learn how to defend yourself. When you walk out to a street, who gets bullied? People who wants to bully you, those are big size, they look at you, you are so small built, you know, they will come after you and all that. So in, in Taekwondo, you are being taught how to defend yourself, how when during practice, that's the time where you really practice, you know, how you hit a big guy, how you bring down a big guy. I mean, here and there bruises, I think is acceptable. You know? <laughs> Wow, this is really amazing. I mean, that was actually, the, you know, like what Ho Ying was asking, do you ever get, you know, bruised? That was actually what stopped me because the moment we had this contact, uh, when you reach that green belt itself, I mean, earlier on, you know, when you have your white belt, you know, well, not, no big deal, you know, with your stunts and so on. It's easy, you know, I pass all those things with flying colours. But the moment when there's a contact spot, I'm like, ah! ah. <laughs> but actually, you, you... Do, I mean, the correct counter and you know yeah. how to counter and all that, you wouldn't get serious. Correct. Really, I would say, you know? Of course, I was very young back then, you know, I was probably only about eight years old, uh, eight, eight, nine years old, very, very young back then. Uh, obviously, you know, for me, I was yeah. quite petite and very small and petite size. So the moment when there's a sparring coming, I'm like, oh, you know, my sister is a little bit bigger. So I think maybe that's an advantage as well. For me, I'm like so tiny. And and I remembered as well, you know, in fact, there was once, um, that was when I was in my secondary days. I was, I was coming back from school. I was actually followed by two guys. So back then, my sister was actually with me. So I was really so grateful that she was with me because she was with her taekwondo stunt. She went, and then she kicked those two guys. <laughs> she literally kicked those two guys off their bicycles. Wow circling around me you know they were saying she was with me they didn't know right i'm like oh you know <laughs> she went, kata, kata. <laughs> so i know for sure that comes in really handy maybe it's about yes. time for to start picking it up again you know now that yeah, <laughs> i say it's never too late for you to <laughs> never too late never too late I'm going to go back to all my stunts again for sure. I'm going to start improving my punches, you know, uh, because my yeah, dad. I must say, <laughs> yeah, it, it gives you good reflexes as well, you know. Absolutely. I mean, that's for my personal experience. You know, last time when working during sales call and I need to visit all the travel agent and all that, I was walking yeah. along the busy road. One motorcyclist came and wanted to snatch my bag. And my wow. reflex was fast enough and I pulled and he, he was quite annoyed because I pulled away, he couldn't get my bag and he shouted at me. And at that time, there was no fear in me and I shouted back at him. <laughs> he turned around, but he went off in the end. <laughs> wow, so, he didn't so know he was doing well. master, you know, seven times. <laughs> wow, wow. It was when I was very much younger, you know. Wow, wow, amazing. I think it's yeah, really it's awesome. really good. Yeah. Because for some they might be like they might have the black belts and everything, but when they count like face these situations in that moment they don't really like have it with them. Yeah. Like they weren't prepared. Yeah. Yes. 
So I think that's what the Vivian was actually saying earlier on, you know, about the Taekwondo teaching you about self-control and, you know, you learn how to stay calm. So in situations like this, you don't panic, right? You stay yeah. really calm and like, okay, I'm now looking at you and I'm looking at my opponent and seeing how shall I be defending myself? Or how should I be punching? You know, what what yeah. what is it you're doing? Anticipation. I think that's where she's saying, you know, your reflexes will be really, really fast in whether yeah. you're going to or you're going to punch right. Uh, fantastic I, I love it you know very good <laughs> <laughs> so on to the next question what are some of the common challenges you experience as a senior executives which aligns to taekwondo in terms of character building well with taekwondo i've been exposed to um the martial art world meeting even the late founder, General Choi, he's a wise man and you learn lots from him and I think he's an amazing guy. And grandmasters, masters, you know, coaches, students, instructors, all kinds of people from all over the world, even locally. So you, you are put into a position to give you uh, better confidence, you know, to deal with people and you manage people. So in the workplace, you also manage people, right? And with the tenets of Taekwondo, you know, it aligned to both, you know, in the Taekwondo as well in my job, you know, like for example, as I say, self-control, we must be able to control ourselves when we deal with our customer in our job, you know, mm -hmm. and in Taekwondo, we must be able to control ourselves when, you know, we're dealing with the people, you know, our students, our instructor, our masters, you know, so I think, you know, all these uh, good challenges, you know, that we pick up from Taekwondo and apply it and reverse, I mean, vice versa from our job also, we pick up and can apply onto Taekwondo. Yeah, I, I think it's really important because at the work environment, executives need to learn about discipline, right? Yeah. To be punctual at the workplace, to be prompt as well. And these are all very important traits uh, for executives as well as in terms of martial arts, you know, like Taekwondo. So once you learn about discipline, I think this is also a habit that you kind of like inculcate. For example, you probably need to wake up early in the morning, you start doing your jogging, you need to wake up early in the morning, you start doing your exercises. These are very, very important habits mm -hmm. that you actually inevitably, you know, kind of like build it up during the time when you're learning your martial arts, right? Yeah. And definitely it will, it will be, you know, applicable for your life. So you learn how to take back control. You learn how to be more disciplined yes. in the way that you're conducting yourself. And like what uh, Vivian actually mentioned as well, you know, when it comes to respect. So it's very important that you respect one another at the workplace as well. You don't end up yelling at one another. You end up respecting okay. one another. So I think these are the key things here, yeah. which are really critical. Yeah. Right. Good question. So we have a question by Nantri. Nantri. I'm not sure if I got it right. It's Nantri. Hi. Hi. I hope I love you. Thank you for being here. I see Michelle is here as well. Okay, great. He says, I know my nephews do Taekwondo and I've never had a chance to ask them this. Perhaps I can ask the master. Is Taekwondo different to Judo and Karate? What's the difference? Uh -huh. Yes, Taekwondo, we, we have a combination of hand and leg. You see, take is cakes, Kwan is hand a punch, you know. Do is the way you, you know, produce the, the art combining kicks and punches. So mm -hmm. Karate is more focused on the hand. Yeah, Judo is more <laughs> of throwing, you know. And uh, it's, it's different. They, they are Japanese art. Taekwondo is Korean art. Mm. Ah, yes. yes. Actually, it's very interesting. Yeah, all, martial all martial arts, yeah. And, and I remember my dad also learns karate. My dad also learns karate, Taekwondo, and even Shaolin Kung Fu as well. I, I actually have a little bit of this learning, uh, Chinese Kung Fu and Taekwondo when I was a kid, you know, by my yeah. dad. And my, my uncle, in fact, was a judo instructor too. So, you know, have a little bit of tinge knowing this and that. Yeah, unfortunately, I never picked up any of those. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I was really of being bruised at, at that time, yeah. yeah. But I think uh, I think it's all very, very interesting, uh, you know, with the combination of all the different kinds of martial arts in place. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. 
good well, question. Tini, who is giving you some yeah, clarity. Juru is a lot of, you know, kind yeah, of like cool. putting them on their shirt and smashing them on the ground, right? And and it's a little bit like wrestling, right? Judo is a little bit like wrestling in yeah. a sense, yeah. With many slapping sounds on the mat. A, a lot, a lot of learning. Yeah. Actually, Judo is teaching you to learn how to fall. If someone yeah. push you, if somebody, you know, yeah. try and slam you, you learn how to break your fall. So that's what Judo is really uh, about. Yeah, how to break your fall. Yeah, because my uncle was a judo instructor, so oh, okay. it's slightly different. Mm. So I do have a little bit of martial art background, uh, you know, my family background, <laughs> not me. But, you know, I learned a little bit here and there, not enough, not enough to fight anybody. Yet. Yeah. Now, on to the next question. Do you think executives should take up this form of martial art for their character building and mm. why? Interesting question. I think yes, the answer is yes, you should take up because it has instilled in you a lot of, you know, besides, as I mentioned, the kicking and the punching, you know, and the good sweat out after a day's work, so stressful and all that, it's very relaxing. Mm -hmm. And you are able to apply the tenets, as I've mentioned, you know, the things, the tools, the values that you have learned, you know, like respect, discipline self-control you know uh and uh, hierarchy you must know the where you stand the hierarchy you know all these are very very uh, good values and tools to use you know and apply onto workplace to deal with people deal with the team how you manage your team you know i strongly agree you know these are the things that you know uh, executive a senior executive should you know mm -hmm. I think this is a good consideration because I mean like for my organization Pet Worldwide, we've been helping multinational companies executives to learn how to have uh, you know good health so we have the health pet program of course in the health pet program we have various exercises nutrition mm -hmm. and so on we can actually consider you know some collaboration to do some of these taekwondo movements actually for executives and I think it's actually really good because it inculcate certain values to them like you said you know aside from physically keeping them fit at the yeah. same time we learn about being disciplined self-control yeah. respect as well and i think it's also you know given the the current environment when it's so stressful people wanted to try and vent out certain you know anger yeah. stress and letting it out right sometimes they don't know how to let this out and with the taekwondo you actually learn how to stay calm you learn learn how to do those stunts you learn how to do those punching and you know you let and sweat it out and then you can probably have a better day so instead of yeah. going outdoors and doing the jogging by itself you can actually do some of those stunts at home as well right so i yes. think this is actually a, a pretty okay. good way of you know a, a channel as well you know of letting out some of those stress mm -hmm. and at the same time learning some self-defense too yeah. uh, obviously we want to make sure that nobody is actually fighting in the office uh, but now you know everyone's at home right yeah. <laughs> again yeah. you know back to dependency learn about self-discipline they learn about self-control so therefore there's no more argument people learn how to respect one another which is what we want to inculcate uh, in the company in the corporate environment where people learn how to respect one another and to work more cohesively so that's actually a very, very good uh, point in there. Uh, you see, like, it's for me, I feel that Taekwondo has made a, a stronger person. It has helped me, you know, strengthen me a lot, you know, in terms of physically as well as mentally, you know, I that's think, right. and uh, dealing with my subordinates, you know, dealing with customers, you know, dealing with students, you know, and uh, as, as the uh, president of the Kuala Lumpur Taekwondo Association, you know, mm. I, um, open to meeting a lot of people as well as uh, the own committee and the government officials as well so all these are you know good yeah exposure that i have you know have the opportunity to have so mm -hmm. i think it really you know uh, taekwondo has really given me a, a lot of uh, opportunities Exposures, right meeting different types of people yeah. cross culturally Both as well the, the environments yeah. yes absolutely so you learn uh, interpersonal skills, you learn how to interact with other people as well. Yeah, very good. Okay, great, great questions there, Adi. Well, this question might be a little bit more to the heart and lesser of physical. <laughs> Have you ever felt like giving up before? What keeps you going? Angie, would you like to go first on this one? Mm -hmm. 
Me, okay. Well, you all know that I actually gave up on my taekwondo after the green <laughs> bell, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, inevitably in our lives, right, there are moments sometimes we're like, ah, you know, what should we do? You know, should we just give up or, you know, follow a different kind of a calling? So when we talk about giving up, I guess it's not in terms of like giving up totally, but rather maybe giving up of certain experience and moving on differently. Uh, in, in fact, looking back, if I had a, assuming if I'm going to have somebody who's going to be coaching me throughout the way, probably I wouldn't have given up that taekwondo part of it you know when i was eight years old or nine years old at the green belt because i had the fear and i didn't know how to overcome that fear mm. at that time right yeah. so assuming if i had maybe if i have vivian or you know your your husband the masters to be coaching me it probably would be different and i think it's really important whether it's learning martial arts or even working for that matter it is good mm. when you coach to be with you to nudge you to walk yes. beside you to help you yeah. to mentor you it makes a lot of difference i think that makes a lot of difference i remember mm -hmm. when i was uh, doing my taekwondo at that time i wanted to give up the moment i was in my horse riding stunts and my legs started shivering. <laughs> like, you know it's like i can't take it anymore i can't take it anymore you, because you have to be in that stance for a long time mm -hmm. and then you start doing your punches and so on yes. I want to give up. At that time, the instructor kept on telling me, no, nope, you can't give up. Continue with that horse riding stance. Keep punching. I'm like, what do I do? You know, <laughs> you want to start coming for your mommy and your daddy, you know. <laughs> it was when you was eight years old, nine years old. Yeah. So yeah, those were the moments. But I'm sure, Vivian, you know, you probably have a better experience than me, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right. You know, the instructor, the coach play a very important role. You know, Absolutely. they, they yeah. must know how to you know encourage the, the the student you know allay their fears you know so for me i've never thought of giving up or quitting no chance because in my family there's the word no is not acceptable <laughs> so we i i mean just carry on and my husband who is the grandmaster you know and uh, very strict with or training when it comes to taekwondo the expectation is very high so we have to put in 100 percent if not near perfection you know and his motto is good is never good enough so you either do well or you know face the music meme you know mm -hmm. so no we don't quit we yeah. just have to. and of course for me taekwondo is a passion i need to pursue my dreams as well you know in achieving what i want to achieve in in taekwondo mm -hmm. now that i'm retired you know i put a little more focus on my taekwondo yeah i think i think that's the difference you know the difference is that we have different husbands i think <laughs> <laughs> of course we have different husbands Absolutely. <laughs> So there you go. That's why, you know, you were kind of like, you know, forced to kind of do this and he was actually there to nudge you and to mentor you and coach you. Well, it's actually different for me, right? Uh, obviously, we also have different callings. I think that's really very important. We have different callings. Your calling is actually in this area. Whilst my calling, I will not give up with regards to how I'm actually mentoring and working with my, my coaches, my clients, and I won't give up on them. You know, I still continue to hold their hands. For as long as they want me to hold their hands, I will hold their hands. So this is, you know, when we talk about not giving up, this is what we're talking about. We're not giving up on life. We're not giving up on difficulties. Yes. We still continue to pursue. Uh, when we are giving up, we're giving up in terms of certain and activities. So if this is your calling, of course, you know, this is where you're passionate about. You're not going to give up on your passion. You're not going to give up on your child, for example, right? Yeah. So you will continue to be, you know, moving forward in that sense. The difference really, quite frankly, is really you have a coach to be there to guide you. That's the huge yeah, difference. So whether it's work environment or home environment, if you have somebody who is there to be supporting you, somebody who is there to nudge you and walk with you, you can definitely go the extra mile. I think that's the difference. True. Yes, absolutely. All right. We actually have a question from Isan. Um, Isan. Isan, that's my friend. <laughs> Master Tan, how do you handle the relationship with Taekwondo and the family? Uh, well, all of us in the family are in Taekwondo. So whenever we talk about Taekwondo, everybody is involved in it. And I think that's a good thing, you know, and uh, no one is being left out, you know. So, but somebody did ask me, oh, 
both of you taekwondo involved in taekwondo but in the bed do your spa and all that i say no never we don't bring that to the bed i say you know <laughs> so i think taekwondo has done good for us my family i, I mean i'm speaking you know all of us my son my daughter you know all the four of us we are very much involved in taekwondo my husband i mean we, we are so passionate about taekwondo we go for championship go for you know all kinds of needs you know involved in you know children getting children involved you know opening classes you know helping people to train you know. so we are passionate all of us are passionate about the art i think this is so sweet you know in fact i think this is such a such a complete a family activity as well right where every one of yes. you are doing it together you discuss yeah. about it together you travel together you go for yes. championship together it is so complete and i think this is a really beautiful picture in fact and i think that's it's, it's fantastic you know if only every family has this and i remember like i said in my growing up years when my father you know was a, a taekwondo black belt my sister was also taekwondo instructor as well you know and i was actually learning it was actually quite fun growing up together with my dad because we actually have that i don't know what you call it you know that little structure there where you have the ropes tied onto it. I remember having to oh, like my hands. hands what you call it? I don't know what you call it now. But I remember as a kid, I was doing that, and then I had to do all my sit-ups, you know. So my dad would be there to like kind of encourage us. And as we grow older and older, we sort of like miss that family togetherness, doing this together, yeah. you know. So I think it's actually a really, really good um, yes. you know, activity to keep the family together. I mean, I'm just speaking through you know what we are going through. Yeah. And yeah. we would like, you know, my granddaughter when she grow up to continue yeah. wow. to as well, you know. We hope, you know? Yes. And it's a healthy spot as well, you know. And of course, yeah. jokingly, you know, when you, because you live and eat and breathe taekwondo, and night when you're sleeping, you might ah, oh, you know, <laughs> that will happen as well in your dreams, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Dreams, yeah. But no, I don't think we we have ever had that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one woke up with a bruised eye, right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks for asking the question. Well, Vivian, we know you recently obtained your 710 black belt. So okay. are you continuing your 8th net? Well, if given the chance, of course, uh, I would like to get my 8th dan promotion. 8th dan promotion are uh, awarded by the headquarters which is international headquarters which is based in vienna and uh, this is based on your contribution in promoting the art through seminars your attendance at world events internationally locally you know all your contribution play a part a role in that so seven done i have to go for the grading i have to train up i mean it has not been easy because age is catching up so hard work, training, you know, have, is, is difficult to remember, you know, memory failing too. You have to remember all the patterns, all the move correctly, you know. So seven done, we are, I'm, I was graded by three grandmaster of our national body, International Taekwondo Federation of Malaysia, you know. And for eight done, it's all up to the uh, international body, you know, to give the promotion yeah and on this note i also like to thank the national body for giving me the opportunity and arranging for my seven done uh, grading recently i'm very grateful for the arrangement which they have done despite the pandemic you know so we, we managed to overcome that obstacle and uh, i got through yeah. the Congratulations. And I think you, you are definitely an inspiration to so many people out there. I mean, you're a grandmother and at the same time, you know, with your age, you're retired, you're already retired, right? So, you know, definitely a lot of people want to, wow, you know, grandmother, sure, seven done. I mean, already for, don't talk about you being a female, right? Even for a man, it's, well, it's so difficult to work, work all the way to get a black belt, let alone, you know, you have done two, done three, done seven as well. 
So yeah. you are definitely a great inspiration. I hope today, you know, your your sharing will touch many people's lives in there as well. Telling them that you're never too old to follow your dreams. You're never too old. I don't think you know any one of us can say that. Oh, you know, I'm already too old to do anything. I think you're never yeah. too old to give it a go. You know, give it yeah. a go. Yeah. yeah, I I also hope so that I can inspire you know people to carry on. People like you, Angeline, carry on from your green belt. No, yes, 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 I will, I will, I will. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, but I, I think I've got my it done for dancing maybe instead of uh, <laughs> 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 yes. I think we all have different callings, but for sure, definitely, you know, after I've spoken to you in fact that day about you know having you inviting you on board here, I was trying to perform and remembering my stunts, you know, my steps. <laughs> Oh, not that. I can still remember it. You know, I can still remember my punches. And in the morning, in fact, I was trying to do this and trying to do my horse riding stunts as well. So you see, there you go. You actually inspired me to try and bring it back again. I'm glad I inspired you. You did, you did, you did. You did, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice to hear. But on to the next question. Do you think Taekwondo played a role in shaping you as a high-performing executive? Angie, which oh, you want Angie to oh, answer? Me, yeah. I, I'm not uh, not really a, a taekwondo. However, however, I definitely think that it will help. Uh, earlier on, like what Vivian actually mentioned, you know, the tendons that you've actually gotten from there, the discipline, the perseverance. I think taekwondo really teaches you perseverance. Like I said, when I was young, that was what it is. <coughs> definitely remembered that perseverance in standing there and doing that stunts and you know being shouted at the you know by the instructors and definitely respect because you have to be cherry or kyung you know jumbi you know so we all remember all these steps okay not better huh? i can still remember all those things so i think those were really important because it really teaches you and then you have to try and remember those stunts as well and follow the instructor's instructions so even you want to be a high performing executive, you definitely need to have high performance behavior. So what is a high performance behavior? High performance behavior is one who have this can do attitude as well. You know that, hey, you know, I can do it. And persistence as in, you know, even how difficult it is, you just have to keep on persisting and then respect, you know, your instructor is there, your bosses are there. So there's no, you know, you, you can't be in subordination. You're listening to your instructor and then you're taking the instructions from them and you're following it through. Plus, at the same time, you know, very, very disciplined, like what time you have to wake up, how many times you have to do your, you know, your stunts, your practice, and so on and so forth. So I think all these are very important, uh, very important factors. Yes. And if you are down, you have to come up, you know, if you fall yeah. down, you make sure you pick exactly. up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Vivian, yeah. you might like to add on some more from there. Yeah, I mean, like for me, as I've mentioned earlier, Taekwondo has really, you know, mm -hmm. built me to be stronger, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, physically as well as mentally, you know, to handle all kind of objections even during my work in my mm. personal life, you know, and you you are a stronger person. You can take on because the strict training, the training that you have to endure, carry on, carry on. You can't give up. You know the training you have to do. It, you persevere on. The indomitable spirit, you know, has to be there. So all this training, very disciplined. You know, self control. You know, uh, mm. you just need to you know carry on and you know do it. So, like as I said, you just want to, uh, I mean, achieve hundred percent. You know, mm. not mm. near perfection. That's what right. you have to aim high. You know, and of course, deep inside, I have my dreams. I mean, I want to achieve my dreams. You know, so I have to go for it. I must go. Always aim for the best. For the highest, mm. you know. So during my work, also I want to aim and do the best. Highest level, right? Oh, yes, as well as for my team. You know? mm. I'm actually so, curious, you know, Vivian, How old were you when you started? First started, uh, you know, taking on taekwondo. How old were you? I took in uh, 1974. I think when I think I was about 16 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Ah. So you know, I. I yeah, I think I do have an excuse, you know, why I didn't follow through because I was too young. I was only eight, nine years old. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was like 16 Possibly, years old. right? It's Possibly. actually too late to join. <clears throat> but then I stopped 
maybe for a while and then when I started working I also carry on and I keep training until now only the only time I stop during the training is when I have my two children my pregnancy but as soon mm. as I'm able to you know exercise I get back into action and train and until now I still train as a grandmother I still you see I help out to look after my granddaughter but in the evening I still go for training there's no such thing as oh I'm so tired looking after my granddaughter today I'm not going for class no excuses yeah no excuses I still because I feel that I need to keep going you know and at my age it's not easy I would say age really age is really you know uh, uh it's as you age you find it more difficult and more difficult you know and a lot of people are still very amazed that I can still kick so high and stretch. Wow, all this. look at the this photos. All, so yeah, amazing. this is all due to hard work. I mean, it's of not course. easy. You have to continuously stretch and train. And I, of course, I also must say I have a good foundation, you know, from young, you know, I carry mm. on, you know, and then guided by good instructor yes. to nurture you, you know, exactly. there's no chance for you to say quit or say no. Mm. Yeah. So you just carry on and you know, right. I think you're in a very conducive environment. You know, you you started when you were 16 years old, you're more mature as well. Yeah. And then you're in a very conducive environment where the home and the family, your husband, your they were all very supportive. They were your coach, they were you know your support, and every one of them actually moving in the same direction. That makes a lot of lot of difference. Yeah, it makes a lot yes, of difference. Yes. Makes a lot of difference. All right. Yeah, I'm lucky in that sense, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, so, yeah. again, you know, for for the rest of you who are out there listening to this, well, you can definitely join you know, Vivian as well. Feel free to join her, you know, in her studio, okay? And you will probably get your personal coaching from her and her her master, right? Yeah. Like now during this pandemic time, MCO lockdown and all that, we still continue conducting classes. Mm -hmm. My son does help with. You know, my, my husband with virtual training, you know, yeah, so, exactly. Who never stop. I mean, the, the students still can continue to train and you know improve on their skills. You know? mm. But you can't do the grading though, you know, with the lockdown, right? You yeah, can't the grading is a bit difficult, but yeah. it comes to a time when you really need to do it. You may have to do virtually. I know mm. that there are countries who have done virtual grading as well. Oh, okay. Even uh, competition, we do online competition. We just wow. perform and videotape it and send it in, and the judges will do the judging. Mm, that's interesting. So we, I mean, technology has made all this possible. But not for the contact part, though. Not for the spa. Yeah, right? no more contact. But anyway, now with the pandemic, you're not supposed to have contact. You're not sports. supposed to. Okay. So, so yes, it's sparring. okay with that. No sparring. Maybe yeah. next time, maybe the VR. <laughs> yes. wow, we are. Wow. <laughs> we haven't got I, that. I will yet. definitely go all the way to my eighth dan for sure. I'll do that. <laughs> I look forward to see that. With the, with the VR, with the VR. <laughs> oh, with the VR. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So on to the next question. Can you share with us your proudest moment of your life? Mm. Well, proudest moment is when I won the first veteran uh, championship, world championship held in Malaysia in Genting Highlands. I won three gold medals, you know, uh, in the veteran female session. And with the three gold medals, I clinched the overall female veteran uh, title. So wow. that, that's my problem. And all along, I trained, but I never thought of like going for competition, going for, but my son, goals my husband used to go for championship my son they do very well in in tournaments and all that but i've never you know but when the opportunity came as a first veteran so i say why not so but it was hard work got to train every day after work you know, to start training and all that so that that is my greatest moment i would say to be able to win the veteran title That's it. so it's such a proud moment right to be able to achieve you know something like this that's really amazing yeah i i think for me you know the the proudest moment if you're talking about the sports was actually to win trophies when it comes to dancing like, so it's the other soft art, <laughs> not the, martial art <laughs> the soft art so like winning trophies when it comes to dancing i think that's okay i still win some trophies, the dancing part of it 
<laughs> All right, lovely. Well, we Thanks. actually have a question from Hock Eng. What mm. is your worst experience as a Taekwondo master and how do you manage to overcome it? Good question. Yeah, good question. I mean, I don't really <laughs> worse. Uh, I, uh, worse is when you forget all your pattern and you are right in the middle, like performing, and then you got stuck and you don't know what to do. You know, oh my God, I forgot my pattern. You know, you're so embarrassed, you know, things like that. Oh, you know, so that is kind of worse because we must always remember our pattern, you know, when we train, you know, and being so senior, you forget, you know, and what are the juniors going to say? Just like out, right? Just kind of yeah. rank out. Yeah. So that has actually happened to you before, Vivian? Yes, it does, you know, mm. in, in class. As we grow older, I mean, I memory fail. Yeah. So it will happen. You just mm. suddenly went blank. You forgot about that move. Yeah. So I think you overcome it. How do you overcome well, it? I, Trial. You just got to accept it that you're forgotten and just accept the punishment. Sometimes we get punishment from the instructor. Wow. Okay, you forgot your pattern. Down, 20 push up, you know, or oh. uh, star jump, 10 minutes star jump, you know, things like that. You you just got to accept the punishment. That's how we learn. That's why nice. the discipline is there. You, you, you must remember it because you, you have to train hard. You must practice. It's because of lack of practice, then you forget. Mm, that's true that's true and i think we're all human you know regardless yeah, of whether age or yeah. no age even when we're younger as well we do forget sometimes especially when we are nervous and we allow our fear to overcome you know to take over us yeah. and we suddenly realize that, oh my gosh you know uh, i have so many people looking at me what should i yeah. do i remember the, the time when i was doing my grading uh, so many years ago, right? I, but I remember that the, the grading when I saw so many there and the instructors are in front and oh my gosh, you know, when it comes to the sparring, I'm like, what am I going to do? I start running in circles. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that was really embarrassing. It's like a very hard to think, you know, catching. You say, no, no, don't touch me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you're nervous, you don't know what you're doing. Nervous, exactly. You know, you, you, yeah. can, you can actually be nervous. And of course, that time I was very, very young. Uh, again, even now, you know, talking about being nervous, there are a lot of executives that I'm actually coaching, you know, senior executives as well. When they go up stage, they were nervous. So it's not even just Taekwondo in a sense per se. It can be public speaking, you know. So there are a lot of people when you put them up on stage, the CEOs, you could be a president of a big multinational companies they could still be knocking on their knees, right? They, their knees could still be knocking and they would still be nervous. They just con can't control it. So this is something with your internal, you know, reflexes actually taking up. And there are also still various, you know, uh, MDs who probably go on stage, suddenly blank out, cannot remember yeah, that. I've seen that. Those yeah. things can actually, yeah, you know, we've seen all those things. So all these are natural human, you know, a reaction and response especially if you are not uh, familiar with certain things and you have this nerve, public speaking, you know, a lot of people are very concerned about that, worried about that as well. Yeah, fearful of that. Yeah. Yes. Well, we have our last question. Okay. Um, it is, if you have to encourage our listeners out there to take up Taekwondo, what would you say? Well, Taekwondo is definitely a good martial art to take up. Uh, parents should encourage their children to take up. I mean, it's an advantage, you know, for to I mean, for one to learn young because the flexibility is there. So, children always an advantage. So, parents should, you know, encourage their children to take up this martial art, you know. And my husband, who teaches in some international school here, in the, these schools, the counsellors, usually, they will recommend children with special needs, you know, mm. or with poor body coordination to go for mm. Taekwondo. Because Taekwondo, because hand and leg are move, movement are combined together, you know, so it will help the child, you know, in terms of coordination and, you know, and through my own experience, so when I help out with the classes and all that, some of these uh, kids, 
you look at them, they are normal, but actually later I found that they actually are special needs students. And at the end of the class or at the end of the term, the parents or even the teacher come and say, thank you very much, you know, for helping my child. Do you know my child has this, this, this and all that? And we're like so surprised we didn't know that the child, you know, need this out. And we have been patiently teaching the child, you know, helping the coordination and all that. But at the end of it, you are so happy, you feel so satisfied, you know, that you've done something for the child and the parents. You know, some of the parents are in tears and they say, oh, you've done a fantastic job for, you know, yeah. helping my child. You know, these are the things that, you know, through our experience, we, we saw with our own eyes. So mm. we always encourage, you know, parents that you sign up your child, but you don't let your child just give up or just the child say you don't want to learn and just give up. But you must... Mm encourage them, follow through, why do they uh, want to quit and things like that. You know? So with the parents' encouragement, parents also play a role. So for adults, it's certainly also a good way, especially ladies, I would encourage ladies to take up because nowadays you really need a bit of self-defense to protect yes. yourself. You know? yeah. So Absolutely. yes, do take up wherever you are, but Choosing a good school, a right school, also play a very important role. You know, you have a good instructor and you know, all this. You you have to find out all the information about all this. You know, mm. Adi, we should be taking up taekwondo again, eh? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> was Virtual taekwondo sessions then. We should yeah. have taekwondo sessions. No, possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> The flexibility part is going to be hard though. I'm nowhere flexible. Well, flexible. I mean, stick, stick. You just got to train, you have to practice, you know, you, you just got to stretch a lot. Yeah, every day you stretch. You know, until now, every morning I still do my stretching at home. I do stretching. Adi, you are so young. Look at that. You know, Vivian can do it. You can do it as well. She's a grandmother. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> Early morning when people are all still sleeping, I'm <laughs> stretching, you know. Yeah. Just spend That's 10 right. minutes, you know. 10 minutes is all you needed every day, yeah. right? 10 yeah. minutes. So we can do it. Very right. good. So every one of us, let's get ready for our Taekwondo, okay? I think yeah. that's really amazing. Well, thank you so much, Vivian, for uh, taking time. To, to, to share with us today. I think we have a lot of, you know, information about it and we're so inspired now. Definitely, you know, I'm now really looking at um, making sure I'm back into my motion. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you, you know, absolutely. in the next one. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank I'm going to try and do this. So, hey, hello. The next time you're going to come near me, don't try it, okay? You're just going <laughs> to just get the next punch from me, all right? Not bad. I can do it pretty fast. <laughs> Thank you once again. Thank you. Yeah. I, yes. I also like to extend my gratitude to you, Angeline, for making this session possible. And um, many thanks to Adi and the rest of the PEP Worldwide Asia team for all the arrangement in uh, making this session today. And I wish uh, Angeline and your team great success in your future events and talks. Thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you so much. And definitely, Adi would like to also mention this, you know, for... Yes, would you like to say this, Adi? Well, once again, I would really like to thank Vivian for have, for taking the time to actually do this with us and for all the fruitful things you have said today. So for any of you who are interested in Taekwondo and you want to take it once you listen to Vivian, because if Vivian can, why can't we? I'm going yeah. to myself every week as well. I think we should do that. Okay. Okay. Visit them. At their email the telephone number is here and their website as well yeah Good. all right and well, exactly there also you know yeah, that. more people to to sign up and uh, yes. to pick up taekwondo you know mm -hmm. so for all those executives out there if you liked it to you know to engage us to help you in putting together a taekwondo session for your executives why not help them to have this mental resilience physical you know resilience as well and whilst they're at home they can actually have virtual taekwondo sessions so we can help you to organize that together right vivian 
Yes, yes, definitely. We, right. we do virtual, currently, we, we do virtual training as well. Fabulous. Okay, so that's really fantastic. Adi, you have some more? We have yeah, some more sessions coming yeah. up. Well, before we end, we have exciting events planned for ABT show. Now, in the next ABT show here, we have Dr. Ali Mayo. She is a research scholar with a PhD in psychology and neuroscience. She explores brain processes in adults and focuses on person-centered therapy techniques, mm. which we will be diving into in the next session in understanding this mind of mind. So do sign up. There's the QR code right there. And we can also have a bigger one right here. Yeah, so and from the 17th of June, save the date. Remember, the save the date is 11 a.m. Uh, Dr. Ali Mail is all the way from America, neuroscientist. Okay, come ready to understand how our brain works. I think this is so interesting, right? Uh, I think our brain is really such, such a complex organ and we definitely don't know very much about it. So come join us on the 17th of June, pick her brains, <laughs> pick her brains and then you know, let's learn together. So save the date, 17 June. That's a QR code. You can start registering now. Once again, that's actually also fully sponsored by PEP Worldwide Asia. Adi? We also have the Executives Esprit 7.7 .7 event. It is exclusively for executives who believe that health and well-being should be the center stage all the time at every aspect of the workplace and not just a health crisis. We have Angie, we have Eugene and also Dr. Douglas who are giving us fruitful words and of encouragement for you to meditate every time, have your own personal mastery. Angie, would you like to add on? Well, I think that's a session that all the executives must attend because this is an excellent session where you learn how to take back control of your life. You also learn about mental resiliency, how to overcome adversity in your life. Plus, at the same time, you know, understanding about emotional quotient, especially now when we are all in a very tense environment and learning how to meditate so that we learn how to keep calm, right, in this difficult situation. So remember to save the date. This one, Executive Esprit 7.7 .7 is on the 7th of July. You can't forget it, 7-7, right? 7th July. And yep, register now. And we hope to see you there. So we have two dates to look out to. 7th July, Executive Esprit, as well as on the 17th of June as well, with Dr. Mail, uh, Ali Mail. Fantastic. Yes. Well, we hope that you guys look forward to this event as much as we do, and we hope you sign up. Now, this is a corporate social responsibility project where we want to raise awareness. And therefore, if any one of you knows who will need these, feel free to call for help. Now, PEP also helps executives re reduce stress obtain work-life, family harmony, and also repeat executives' performance for more than over 35 years. If you have any suggestions regarding the future topics that we're going to have, do drop us an email at communications at PEP Worldwide Asia. Yeah, and if any one of you out there would like uh, to sponsor any of our, you know, uh, Angeline VTO show as well, if you'd like to be involved in this, please drop us an email as well. We will definitely love to discuss with you, you know, for any sponsorship uh, pro of the program too. So looking forward to um, seeing you on the 17th of June and on the 7th of July. Thank you once again. again have a wonderful evening and thank you once again for to everyone who you know make time to be here to get with us today yeah, vivian thank you, thank you so much you. i'll see you in kl hopefully soon yeah i look forward to that I, I yes, that's what yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What not least let's thank our team members for making this event possible yes so we have from all over from Vietnam as well as from Australia as well as from Singapore and now we have Vivian from Malaysia as well so thank you so much have a wonderful thank evening you. everybody yeah take good care to you. stay safe and stay yeah. healthy stay safe. okay yeah stay safe. Most important. stay safe yes yes absolutely